Hey guys, Pablo Munoz here and welcome to this short video about 3D concept art. I want to share with you a little bit more about the nature of the work that I do and, and how I approach it and hopefully give you some ideas on how to improve or um, perhaps update your own workflows. So I do a lot of concept art in 3D, mainly character design, that's kind of like my passion, which uh, for someone more used to the traditional definition of concept artist uh, might be weird. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and define some of the terminology before we move forward. The job of a concept artist, in a nutshell, is to take the vision of the director or the client, interpret it, and basically make it a reality through images. And ideally, these images will have um, you know, a cohesive visual language, and it will help to set the tone for the entire project, uh, regardless of what the project is, right? It could be a movie, a video game, an installation, an advertising campaign, etc., right? Now, the way that you produce those concept art images is really not that important, I think. As long as it communicates the idea and it helps to align that creative direction or that vision of the project, um, it's all good, right? So a concept art really can be done as a 2D illustration, a 3D render. Um, you can use photo bashing technique, which is just using a bunch of photographs to create texture and add details and that sort of thing, or combining all of them, right? Combining 2D as well as 3D and photographs, whatever you want. Um, what it comes down to is quality and speed. And this is really what I wanted to show you in this video, a workflow with a good balance that um, hopefully will help you produce a high quality work and keep up with the demand um, and the speed to be relevant in this industry. One more thing that I should say is that depending on the project or at least the stage of the production in the project, I think there are two types of concept art, evocative and functional. So the intention of the first one, the more evocative one, is just a fantastic tool for storytelling, uh, to provide context and, and obviously to produce an emotion, right? And this is the type of concept art that I like doing the most, right? This is the, the one that I enjoy doing the most. But also you have what I would describe as functional or functional concept art. And this is something that showcases the concept or the idea um, with the functionality of the design and obviously relevant to, to the story. For example, a concept art of a sci-fi gate or, um, or a door, you might want to show how you envision that mechanism of that door actually working, you know? So you can show two states or opening and closing and, and that sort of thing. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. I use ZBrush as my primary sketching tool to quickly produce ideas in 3D. And ZBrush is the digital equivalent to basically working with traditional clay, but in 3D, right? In a digital realm. And it allows you to develop your ideas organically without worrying too much about any technicalities. And hopefully um, I will show some of those examples throughout this video. So suppose that I have a brief uh, from a director to design a stylized female character. Like any 2D illustration or concept artist, I would also start with a loose sketch or you know something simple to figure out the proportions and you know the silhouette and all of that. Essentially blocking out the character, right? So in 3D is no different. I use a simple set of geometrical objects in ZBrush, like spheres or cylinders, to set up the volume of the character. And since this is just going to be a concept, I'm only focusing on producing the parts that will be visible for the final image. This blocking stage or this first stage of the concept is very important because this is where you will define the proportions or exaggerate features, essentially making your design appealing, right? And the equivalent in 2D would be to do a series of thumbnails and, and sketches just to iterate and, and do a bunch of options before you commit to develop anything further. One of the benefits of doing this process in 3D is that even if you are at a more advanced stage in the development process, you can make big alterations and completely change the outcome of the concept. And I will show you more of that later in the video. There are a bunch of technical terms that you might have heard of or might have encountered if you venture into this world of 3D, but most of those technicalities refer to very specific processes that can be ignored um, to a degree, if your goal is a concept art. So for instance, if we talk about retopology, this is a very technical process that involves the um, reconstruction of a more sketchy 3D mesh to turn it into something that has simpler and cleaner um, arrangement of vertices, basically. And usually with the intention to take it into uh, a game engine or animating it and things like that. So in ZBrush, you can use a feature called the Z-Remesher to get you something pretty decent as a base for this uh, retopology process with a single button, right? With a click of a button, you get something that is pretty decent um, and is the equivalent to this, uh, to this process, right? And in the context of this video, I use Z-Remesher purely to simplify the geometry distribution of the mesh so that I can easily post the concept later. That's it. So I'm not paying too much attention to the distribution of the loops, how the vertices are placed, which is uh, something that is quite um, important actually for animation. 
And again, this process of retopology generally takes uh, a long time, especially if you were to do it properly for a production asset. But again, you can get something useful if your goal is a concept art with the click of a button and you know a few tweaks of the settings. Now, by this point, let's say that I've spent one hour working on setting up this bold character app, uh, and it's just a great 3D object, um, you know, with no color, it has no, no pose, it's very symmetrical, so not very exciting at this point. And a more seasoned or more uh, experienced 2D concept artist would have already produced, you know, probably a very convincing piece in that time. So I'm not trying to prove that one approach is better than the other or one is worse and, and that sort of thing. I just think that concepting in 3D gives you certain advantages uh, once you have the base setup that I'm going to hopefully show you uh, as an example in this video as well. So let's say that the brief has also some key visual points that I should be aiming for in terms of um, how the directors wants this character to look like and, and that sort of thing. So for instance, the, the character should be a young woman uh, with short hair, uh, similar to the Mathilda character played by Natalie Portman in the movie uh, The Professional. And the hair should be purple or kind of like a bluish tone. Again, in ZBrush, we can just take a sphere and quickly shape it into the volume of that hair, very sketchy. And in the case of this character, there is no need for sculpting pores or like tiny wrinkles or high frequency details or any of that. Since this style is more cartoonish, it has cleaner surfaces and, and all of that. But creating details in ZBrush is extremely easy. In fact, I have quite a big library of custom brushes that have helped me to speed up the process of detailing certain things, like refining the hair in this case and doing all of those uh, crevices and indentations to, you know, produce the, the effect of um, hair strands and, and things like that. So for a 2D concept artist, this is pretty much the same idea of creating custom brushes in Photoshop for painting hair. As I mentioned, once you have the base, other parts of this process are relatively easy. To add color to this mesh, I use polypaint in ZBrush, which is uh, basically adding color to the vertex points, but because we deal with millions and millions of polygons really easily, the color transitions are actually pretty smooth and um, you can paint with lots of resolution, let's say, right? So you can create very intricate and complex textures in ZBrush using polypaint, or you can even project um, image textures directly into the 3D mesh. But again, for the, the stylization of this character and what I'm going for, the texturing is very simple with just some subtle variations in the color of the skin. Now, at this point, what I have uh, could feed the description of that sort of functional concept. As I mentioned earlier, I could just take this very symmetrical pose and, and boring pose in, you know, and in a couple of minutes create a reference with different views of the character, like front, back, um, side, that sort of thing. And I could send this to another production artist to work on a more useful base, something that is going to be more useful in the production of this project, right? However, these are the early stages of the process and my goal is to make a concept art that not only shows the, the design that I'm doing for the character, but also that conveys an emotion and perhaps um, gives a hint of the character's personality. And these type of concepts are quite useful to, to pitch an idea, right? So very, very early stages of a project. Now in ZBrush, I usually save different files along the process, but especially before I move into the next stage, which is posing the character. Now the pose of the character is what I think will produce, you know, the, I don't know, 90% of the appeal of this concept. And, you know, to be in line with the stylization that I did, the, uh, the smooth surfaces, the delicate sort of curved lines that this character has and the subtle work on the color, etc. I'm also going for a very subtle pose, um, hopefully something that shows the vulnerability of the character as well. As part of this posing stage, you can also think about other useful elements that can be added to enhance the design or enhance the presentation. So I added some clothes that can help a bit to accentuate the personality of the character. And for the purpose of this concept, it is a good element to add contrast and, and balance the design a little bit. Again, ZBrush makes this a really simple process. So with a cylindrical open mesh, I use the dynamics in ZBrush to generate uh, the effect of drapery and, and produce these folds really quickly to complete the effect of this piece of clothes. So basically what we have now is a polished mesh with texture, obviously, or, or polypaint or color, and with a pose that works well for the concept. Now I can go ahead and export this mesh and start my work on the presentation and the lighting of the concept. Now this next stage can also be done in ZBrush and you can render a bunch of passes and combine them in Photoshop and that sort of thing. Uh, but I prefer to use something like Maverick Render or Keyshot uh, just to get a more realistic render. In this case, I'm using Marmoset Toolbag 4 just to set up the, the 3D character and set up the, the scene, which gives me an amazing render quality and it allows me to interactively play with the light sources to create the mood of the image very, very quickly. 
Now, lighting is a whole other topic on its own, and it could make or break your design. Um, this is another example of one of the benefits of doing the concept in 3D, right? With a 2D approach or 2D concept, you are somehow committed to the lighting that you establish with the blocking of the color palette and that sort of thing. However, in 3D, we have the ability to test a bunch of different scenarios, different lighting, different colors, um, and all of these will drastically change the mood and how the concept is presented and perceived. So I think at this point we have something that is working quite well. I'm happy with the result. So I just do a quick render of the image and send it to the director as a first draft. So here's where things get really interesting and where the whole idea of concepting in 3D really shines. Now let's say that the director loved the idea but comes back to you with some changes saying that the script has been revised and although the idea of the character is the same, the concept should reflect a more elegant and more graceful design, right? And you might also get some new um, key visual points, right? Something that you should aim for in terms of, of the visuals. For example, an, an even shorter hairstyle, uh, perhaps move from the color hair to a more plain light values on the hair color and that sort of thing. Again, because we have the 3D sketch, we can just come back to ZBrush and rather than doing a whole new concept setup, we can take the mesh of the hair and easily tweak it to accommodate for the changes. So in this case, I use a tool called Sculptris Pro inside ZBrush that um, allows you to add or, or remove resolution of the mesh based on the size of your brush. So it's quite organic in the way that it works. But this new updated design takes about five to 10 minutes. Um, I also kept the version of the previous hairstyle just in case. It's always good to um, keep versions of what you're doing. And that's it, in less than 20 minutes, we have um, a very different concept for the character and we can further refine the presentation with you know, a slightly different lighting scenario and, and render that one too as well. Now let's have some more fun developing this concept. Let's assume that the director really likes the updated version that you did, uh, but wants some subtle changes or wanna see some subtle changes, like adding a small tattoo on the exposed shoulder of the character, uh, maybe adding some more makeup to give the eyes and maybe the mouth as well, some more contrast, and perhaps some jewelry to reinforce that sort of classy and, and elegant theme that we wanted to, to achieve. That is actually a pretty easy update. And to be fair, if this was a 2D concept, it would probably take the same amount of time and effort. Um, but anyway, in ZBrush, I just use a darker color to add a darker lipstick um, or just a, a darken up the, the color of the lipstick. And also with the same color, add some eyeliner using polypane. Same technique that I, that I use for texturing or adding color to the entire mesh. Now for the hoop earrings, I use a basic 3D ring shape, um, obviously one for each side, and, and I pose them pretty straightforward, and also added the, the lines and dots that I mentioned to create that tattoo uh, of some sort of you know stylized moon with stars in the shoulder. That's it, right? We're back to render, and we can update this version of the character. Now, all of this has been really fun, and it might be ideal, but in real life, there might be more changes and sometimes more drastic ones. So let's leave the, the admin side of things uh, like you know quoting or charging extra for, um, for additional changes and, and all of that out of this example because um, it's outside of the scope of this video and instead I wanna focus on the actual production workflow of the concept. So once again, let's see the benefits of concepting in 3D uh, kind of like in action <laughs> if we assume another round of changes. Let's say that um, the director comes back saying that the whole direction of the project has changed for you know, whatever reason and that they are now looking for some sort of modern live uh, princess, similar to the concept we sent, uh, but with some more relaxed and, and fresh look. And they felt like the previous version was a little bit too formal and they suggest um, you know, more like a long, thick red hair instead of the short one that we had. You know, fair enough. Going back to ZBrush, since we already have most of the assets that they like or the parts of the design that they like, we can just focus on the hair for now. I use the Dynamics tools in ZBrush to take a couple of planes with thickness and drop them over the head. These planes with thickness should work just fine as a quick blocking for the new hairstyle. I use another tool in ZBrush called Dynamesh that basically allows you to combine everything and automatically regenerates the topology. So again, you don't have to worry about any technicality or anything like that, just focusing on the design. So once I have this Dynamesh object, I can easily use any of my brushes to, to sort of sculpt and define the, the flow of this new hairpiece, right? And starting with some subtle tweaks using the move brush just to get the silhouette and the, and the shape right. And then I can go ahead and add some basic details with the, the custom brushes that I mentioned, like, like those carvings and, and crevices and things like that. The rest of the process is pretty much the same as before. Using polypaint to establish the color of the hair and 
and basically update the texture of the skin a little bit just to keep in line with the with the changes that I made on the hair. So you know possibly some freckles and tweak the dark lipstick uh, to a more plain fleshy color uh, just to reflect that fresh look that they want. Keep in mind that although these are basically sped up videos, the actual process is very, very quick and it's something that you will get noticeably faster the more that you do it. Now this is the final concept, let's call this the, the super new final concept and the director really, really likes it. So much so that they say, hey, would you be up for another character design? We want to basically take the same character, but we want to see how this modern princess will look when she crosses in, I don't know, like a magic portal in the real world and enter this fantasy world um, where she will become like an elf character. Brilliant. This is a great opportunity. You already have part of the assets that can be reused and, you know, to make another character will require just a bit of tweaking of those current assets. So back to Seabrush, right? We do a quick update to the color of the eyes and it's not too different since it is just another version of the same character. Um, and you know we want to maintain some continuity uh, but for the elf look we can go for a long white hair and again same deal we start with a simple sphere that can be stretched and dynamesh so that we don't worry about the topology or anything like that we are literally freely sculpting the this this new hairstyle and, and the volume of this new hair Obviously, a key visual reference would be the pointy ears, right? And this immediately puts the character in the context of the fantasy world, which is great. And, you know, using a move tool, we can just uh, pull essentially some of these uh, points to create the elongated ears. And we can swap the big hoop earrings for some other type of jewelry, right? Again, trying to maintain that sort of connection between that modern princess concept that we did before and the new variant of the character. In ZBrush, I just take a quick curve brush that allows you to do those swirly things with, um, with a deformer to get something going. Again, very rough, just enough to convey the idea, and I can go ahead and refine this later if the draft gets approved. At the end, I just did some subtle color changes or adjustments to the skin just to make it a bit more pale and gave this design another feature piece or like, like another jewelry feature piece around the neck. And that's pretty much it. We'll also keep the tattoo as it could be, uh, you know, a subtle reference to associate the two concepts uh, with the same character, uh, which is fair enough. And that's it. We're back to rendering this concept. In Marmoset, I just updated the colors of the cloth a little bit and obviously adjust the lighting to, to brighten up everything and kind of like infuse this render with more of that sort of dreamy mood that goes really well with this type of elf um, designs. So now we have a brand new concept that fits well within the theme and the style of the project done in just a fraction of the time, right? So to reiterate, I'm not saying that this is better or worse than doing 2D concepts. Um, you know, you can achieve the same workflow by literally adding layers and turning things on and off or adjustment layers in Photoshop. I'm just showing you what my personal preference is, just to give you an idea on how I use the tools that I use, like, you know, ZBrush or, you know, any other tool to help me produce a concept in 3D. So to wrap up this video, let's just say that director calls back and say that they decided to add a new variant to the story and that they need um, an Android or like a humanoid version of this character. Nothing too extreme, just something to, to show or to understand that it's the same character, but it's not human, kind of like an Android type of thing. No problem, right? Same deal. A quick tweak of the meshes in Seerush. So we can use smaller brushes to, to sort of cut through the model a little bit and, and, and produce this sort of paneling effect. Uh, which immediately changes things quite a bit and we can also do an update on the textures uh, so or, or just change the the hues basically to depart from those fleshy tones a couple of hard surface details that could act as plugs to recharge this android for example and we are ready for another render in marmoset i just tweak the shader to make it less rough and obviously more reflective um, aiming for some kind of like porcelain material as well uh, for this new concept so to sum up, the, the setup in ZBrush for the asset is probably the longest part of the process, at, you know, as it should be, since you're building the basis of the character and you actually need a strong foundations, you know, like proportions, solid forms, um, you know, the stylization, the, the overall silhouette of the character. So those are the crucial parts of this workflow. But once you have this initial stage, right, producing multiple variants or, um, you know, adapting the assets that you already have in 3D to, you know, further tweak or, or create a new concept should be pretty easy and it's actually a lot of fun. 
Now, at the end, I always like to do some tweaks in Photoshop so I can combine my 3D render with a bit of, you know, paint over, mostly refinements on the hair in this case, uh, background color, and maybe some subtle adjustment to, to grade the final look. But that's pretty much it. Another really cool and helpful aspect of this workflow is that you can help speed up the production since the assets you have are already in 3D. So remember when I mentioned earlier on in the video that I save multiple files along the way, especially before I pose the model, well, you could take, for instance, that version of the model, the one that is symmetrical, clean it up a little bit and share it as a starting point with the production team, right? So they won't have to start from scratch. They already have a base mesh. They already have the proportions, everything that was approved in the design so that they can, you know, develop the production asset. But it, it really, really helps um, rather than creating everything from scratch or from a 2D concept. I hope that this overview has been interesting and hopefully has given you some insight into one of my workflows and, you know, ideas on updating or, or improving your own workflows. All right. See you next time. Cheers.